it just started. Okay, that'll be at the start of the video. Right, okay, um, so uh, we're looking at the precipitation reaction. It's a method of measuring rate of reaction. If you come over here and have a look at this reaction equation, if we take this chemical here called sodium thiosulfate, and if we react it with hydrochloric acid, oh, there's my hydrochloric acid here. If I react that with hydrochloric acid, then it's going to form a few different products. The first product it's going to form is called sodium chloride, which is aqueous, that means it's a solution. The second product it's going to form is sulfur dioxide, that's a gas that smells like farts. Then we've got sulfur as a product, and you can see there's this little S here. That S means the sulfur is a solid. And because this reaction forms a solid product, we can say that's a precipitate. So we're going to get a precipitate of solid sulfur, and then our final product here is water. Okay, now in terms of measuring the rate of this reaction, what we do is we take a conical flask, okay, and what's going to happen is as I mix the hydrochloric acid and the sodium thiosulfate together, it's going to form a precipitate, which basically means that the contents of this flask are going to turn cloudy. Now, to measure the rate, all I need to do is time how long it takes to turn cloudy, okay. So I need a few control variables here, put my goggles on. First thing I'm going to do is measure about 30 centimetres cubed of the sodium thiosulfate using a measuring cylinder. Always name the equipment you use in your method. Okay, I want to make sure that the level of that liquid is right on the mark where the meniscus is at the, grad, uh, at the line. Okay, the base of the meniscus is on the graduated line. Okay, all right, so that's good. Right, so I've got 30 centimetres cubed of the sodium thiosulfate. I'm going to put that into the conical flask. Okay. Now, next up, I need to react this with hydrochloric acid. I need less of this. I only need about 10 centimetres cubed. Don't worry too much about the quantities in exam questions, as long as you state a quantity and state that you're going to control it. Okay, well, bang on there, 10 centimetres cubed. Now, as soon as I add the hydrochloric acid to the sodium thiosulfate in here, it's going to start reacting. And what I need to do is time how long it takes to turn cloudy. But cloudy is a bit of a weird judgment. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a black cross on this white tile. And what we'll do is we'll say that the reaction's finished when I can no longer see that black cross through the solution. Okay, so I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid and start my timer at the same time. Okay, here we go. Can we get the timer in shot as well? And let's add the hydrochloric acid and start my timer, give it a quick swirl, done. Okay, so now we can see, we're gonna wait to see how long it takes for the cloudiness in this solution to block out the black cross. Okay, so it's gonna take a little while. If we could zoom in on that maybe from above, so if you look at it just from above the flask, looking down in there, that'd be great. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so we're waiting to see how long it takes for that black cross to no longer be seen. Remember, it's a precipitate of solid sulfur that's making it turn cloudy there. Okay, I think that cross is nearly invisible now. And about, I can't see it anymore. You might be adding on the camera. So I'm gonna stop my timer. And that's come out at 41 seconds. So we can, say that the shorter this time is, the faster the rate of reaction. Because this cloudy precipitate would have formed quicker if the time taken to block out the cross is lower. Now typically what we'll do in this is repeat it at different concentrations. Now to make a lower concentration, all we would do is take the sodium thiosulfate and add water to it. So if the total volume of this measuring cylinder is 50, and if I put 40 of the sodium thiosulfate in and add 10 of water, well that's 40 out of 50, the original concentration. It's four fifths the original concentration. So you could argue that's 80% of the original concentration. And I could do different dilutions of this, maybe by filling it up to 30 with the sodium thiosulfate, then 20 of water. That's 30 out of 50, so that would be 60%. If I did 20 sodium thiosulfate and 30 water, well that would be 20 out of 50, so that's 40% the original concentration. And I could repeat this experiment again and again with uh, decreasing concentrations of the sodium thiosulfate. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Please read the guide and that might aid your understanding further. Cheers.